I, I'm especially glad to be here because in all my years of teaching in the English department, and as many times as I've heard Jacqueline's name in one context or another, because she's very active in, in the department, um, I've never actually met her. And so I'm very glad to meet you, Jacqueline, even, even virtually. Um, and, and I'm really eager to hear what you have to say about your experience at Carleton. So I guess first, um, uh, can you say a little bit about what made you choose Carleton and also what made you choose English? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, Professor Whiting, what an introduction. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I chose Carleton because when I was in high school, I actually participated in Carleton's high school writing competition. It was a short, a short story competition. I think there were other branches as well, like essays. Um, and I ended up winning first place for my short story. And I got to come to Carleton to uh, present my story and I got to meet some professors and um, just other uh, creative writing people around my age too. Um, so the first time that I ever got to present a short story of my own was at Carleton, and that was a special moment for me. Um, and I had also heard already from some of my high school teachers who knew I had an interest in creative writing that Carleton was a place that I should keep my mind on because the English program here, um, they just, it was kind of well known that, at, at that time and hopefully still now. It's certainly proven true for me that um, this is a good place to be if you're interested in literature and in writing. And for me, I always knew that I wanted to do English ever since I was a wee child. So I was very lucky to be somebody who always had my heart set on one program. Um, and here I am, my heart was set and this, and this is where I ended up. That's fantastic. Um, you have taken advantage of a lot of the English department's offerings. Um, uh, you, you've also been, uh, as, as was Sarah, in, involved with co-op. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was somebody who, when I first was applying for um, for this program, I had co-op on, on, on my degree from the very beginning. Um, so I had my heart set on it. From, from the start, and I ended up doing um, three my three terms. Two of them were in, in government, and one of them was at a not-for-profit. So I got these three very different experiences while I was doing it, and I came out of it with this really good sense of, okay, this is how an office works. Here are a bunch of government acronyms <laughs> that now make a little more sense to me, and um, and here's how, here's how networking works. Um, yeah, it was just all these different experiences. And I also um, got a sense of this is what I like to do. This is something that I now am able to do because I got the skills to do so. And then here are a few things that I don't like as much that I now and now I can take all of that um, into the workplace when I finally get out of the, I don't know, I find school a very comforting little bubble. So it was nice to have a bit of a workplace exper experience while I'm still in the comfort of uh, I'm a student. Please be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm sure that you know at, at, you're in fourth year that one of the most important lessons to learn at university is what you don't like uh, as much as what, what you do like and what you do want to do. Um, yeah, were you were you in the same in the same placement for all three placements or were they were they quite different? They were all quite different. Um, they were all communications positions of some sort. Um, the first one was, it was just communications. The second one was a blend of uh, social media and public affairs. And then the third one um, at the not-for-profit that I did, it was actually just me. It was me and, and my manager doing all the social media and comms and events. So yeah, three very different experiences. Nice. Um, how do you see your English degree and your English studies inflecting those 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 business experiences or those workplace experiences that, that um, at like like history um, English is a very adaptable degree in a in a lot of different contexts and our graduates go all over the place amazingly we had one go to medical school and I'm not quite sure how he pulled that off but um, it, how you were talking about what you what you some of the things that you got from your co-op experience how was that affected by your English studies? 
Yeah, okay, well, first of all, we need to make sure not to tell my parents that somebody managed to pivot their English degree to med school because they're going to try to make me change my mind again. Um, but I, I agree that English is so adaptable because I really think that the world just needs good writers, um, people who can look at a text, break it down and find a way to communicate that um, with with words like we are weird people. Um, and that's something that the world is always going to need. And I, I see myself um, like I did a lot of communications positions. I think English is great for that. Of course, English is good for teaching. That's the thing I've always been asked. Are you going to be a teacher? And I say, no, I don't know how to talk to children. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's so many there's so many things that you can do with it because it really is about how do you how do I get my point across? How do I be persuasive? How can I do this with my words? And also, um, as you get go along in your degree, you'll end up doing a little bit more on the on the presentation side. Um, some classes will ask you to take about half the class time, even a full class time, to just talk about um, a piece of literature yourself to guide the conversation um, that the class goes in. And those those are all important skills that um, that you can bring into any workplace. Thank you. So now that we're talking about classes, do you have a, a, a favorite class looking looking back? OK, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and say that my favorite classes were the creative writing workshops okay. that Carlton offers um, for everybody watching. Um, the creative writing workshops are courses in the English department where you can submit. Uh, you have to get in by submitting a portfolio of your writing samples. And each class tops at about 15 to 20 students. Um, so it's, I mean, it's not that it's elite selective or anything, but you know, you have to show that you have a little bit of writing in your pocket. Um, and there, it's just a great way to take a little break from the essays. You get to do some personal writing for yourself. Um, you also don't need to be, you need to be an English major to take them. I had. I mean, it was only one that I know, but I did have one STEM major in um, in a workshop once. Um, but it's really a nice environment for just um, writing your own personal work, commenting on other peers work and just being in this space where everybody is um, just bouncing creative ideas off of one another. Um, and if I was going to choose one that was my favorite, I would say it was the very first one that I took the intro to fiction writing course because this workshop was where I ended up meeting all of my friends that I still keep to this day from Carleton. That's nice. I, I, I don't know. I don't think you mentioned this, but the English department has a concentration that can be added you can, to, to, um, to, your, to the major. Uh, so that can be, and you graduate with an English degree with a concentration in creative writing. Um, but as, as Jacqueline said, you don't have to even be an English major to be in the, um, in the pro in in the classes, um, we also have a drama studies concentration and minor that uh, you also don't have to be a, a major to be take part in those things. Too, uh, you haven't been involved in the drama studies. I think that you've got so many things that you're involved in, you can't be involved in that. But yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm very busy. But I did take a um a class for intro to um to script writing and writing for writing for the stage. That's what it was called, I believe. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have a uh, following up on a question that Susan asked, do you have a, a best moment or a proudest moment from your from your years at Carleton? Um, yeah, I do. So for me, this was when my very first English professor who I had for my first year seminar, and I agree with I believe it was Sarah that spoke about the about the first year seminars. They're a great opportunity. Um, they're a great classroom environment. And um, so it was when my first English professor that I ever had, she reached out to me to ask if I was interested in being the student blogger for the English department. And I've been the student blogger for the past two years. Um, and it just made me really happy that I had made relationships with my professors and that the effort that I was putting in to my degree as a student and as a, and as a writer was uh, was being acknowledged and apparently paying off. 
Yes, well, your blogs get talked about quite a lot around the department, so they're they're being widely read by by not only students but also by 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 teachers. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. Thank you. I'll believe. I'll choose to believe you. <laughs> oh well, I wouldn't lie on television. Um, <laughs> um, so the the scary the scary question. I I know that you're not going to be a teacher because you already said that. But what does come next for you? What are you going to do with your English degree? So I started this English degree wanting wanting to be a writer, um, and I still do. But I have widened my definition of what of what that means. Um, this degree, I think, has provided me with the skills to be able to write in a lot of different contexts. Um, an essay, you know, is persuasive, and I think that writing persuasively is a skill that you can take into non-academic writing as well, um, in any sort of context. We also, I am somebody who tends to write a little bit too much, and then I have to cut out a bunch of words at the end. And writing um, is always better if you're chopping things down as opposed to building things up. And there's a lot of contexts in workplaces where, you, where you're going to want to write as succinctly as possible. For example, emails, everybody has too many emails. Um, and that being said, about workplaces um, in general. I do love academia and I love literature and I want to be a student for as long as possible. So I'm definitely going into an MA after this um, and maybe a PhD down the line. I'm still keeping that open. Um, and I've already started preparing for this by doing the co-op work terms um, and just trying to come at my schoolwork from a place of personal fulfillment and achievement as opposed to just getting things done. I mean, that's very, it's easier said than done. Sometimes you just need to get the assignment out there and say, I'm not thinking about you anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm coming at things from a perspective of, okay, what, what am I getting out of this? How is this making me better at what I would like to do? Um, and also just trying to take opportunities that will be good for that I think will be good for me, even if they're scary, like being a fast ambassador and doing this. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure. Well, it sounds as though for certain whatever comes next, you're going to be taking your your writing skills with you. And I'm really glad that you emphasize that because I, I think I can't think of anything more important for anybody in any career than to be able to express themselves clearly and effectively um, in writing. And it sounds as though you've got that uh, in, in, in a great degree. So I can't let you go without asking you from one, one English major to another, um, do you have a favorite book? Oh, I do. I know, I've, I've just put you on the spot there. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're lucky that I've had this question asked before and I've been... Huh? I've been like a deer in headlights before, but now I have an answer. Um, my favorite book is called Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And it's a book about the end of the world where a demon and an angel have been assigned um, with placing the Antichrist in a satanic family so that the end of the world can begin. But this demon and angel love the world so much that they decide to put this boy in a regular family and have him grow up not knowing that he has the powers of the Antichrist. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, um, is that your interest in, in writing? Are you interested in fantasy science fiction? Is that a special interest of yours or are you just interested as a reader? I I jump all over the place as a writer. I, I really do. I don't know what kind of writer I am yet. I don't even know what kind of reader I am yet. I'm, I'm all over the place there. <laughs> Well, I don't think that that goes away with age or experience either. Yeah, so I thank hope. you so much, Jacqueline. You're, I, I wish you the very, very best in whatever comes next, and especially in this next getting, getting finished with this year. Thank you, Professor. It was so nice talking to you.